Hi everyone, my name's Daryl. Welcome to the Cars and Creators channel, where we talk about cars and some of the technology used by YouTube creators. Today, I'm doing an owner's review of my very special car, the 2012 Nissan GTR. I bought the GTR back in April of 2011. I actually bought it from out of state in Greensboro, North Carolina. The reason I did so was because in Las Vegas, they were charging way over MSRP. So it was gonna cost me over 110,000 to get my GTR. Before I talk about the feelings that I have for my GTR, let's get into some of the vehicle specifications. The MSRP of the GTR back in 2012 was $90,950. The horsepower was 530, with torque coming in at 448 foot-pounds. The zero to 60 time was an astonishing 2.9 seconds. And the quarter mile came in at 11.2 seconds. I really decided to get my GTR back in 2011. There was a car and driver article that really talked about the performance of the GTR. They talked about how it now had launch control in 2012. They increased the boost. They increased the horsepower. And the combination of those factors made the GTR just a beast off the line and a monster on the track. So even the latest 2022 GTRs, in fact, even the Nismo model, really can't outperform the 2012 GTR. In fact, many people say the 2012 and 2013 were the best performing GTRs of the bunch. Later GTRs, were more comfortable and quiet. But to be honest, they weren't as brutal, they weren't as raw, and they, and they really weren't as fast. So one of the things that I really love about the Nissan GTR is the looks. I mean, just look at this thing. It's just, it's a, it's a piece of art is what it is. I remember a couple of years ago, a woman came outside of a 7-Eleven and approached me. And she was like, what kind of car is that? Is that a race car? What kind of modifications did you make to it? And I was like, no, it's just a stock GTR. And she was like, that's amazing. I don't get as many second looks at the car that I used to a while ago. And maybe it's aged a little bit. The people that do look at it a second time, it's because they know. They know what kind of car this is. It's a Nissan GTR. And a lot of times they'll come up and talk to me about the GTR. And one of the first things that they say is this is my dream car. I've loved this car for so long and I'm saving up to get one. So having a car like this makes you feel really special. So what are some of the things I don't like about my GTR? The GTR suspension, it is a little firm. The later models of the GTR, they did do quite a bit to make the suspension a little more comfortable. So you need to think about that if you're getting a GTR. One of the things I don't like is really what makes the car so special. It's just a race car. There is no car on sale today that you can get that feels like the GTR feels. It's raw. It's just brutal. Um, and it's just, it's really a joy to drive. Um, hey guys, so I'm gonna take the GTR out for a little drive and so you get to see kind of hand, how it handles, um, how it accelerates, um, as the comfortableness of the car and the quietness of the car. So I don't know if you hear that, but we're kind of, kind of going in slow speeds and you can kind of hear. It just makes some interesting noises the GTR does. And so wait for it, wait for it. So you can kind of hear that little that little clunk a little bit as it shifts to first gear. Um, it's not as bad as... It clunks quite a bit. <laughs> it's not as bad as... Um, uh, I think dual cut clutch transmissions in general kind of do that. Um, but it's it's really not terrible. Um, but the GTR is definitely not what you would call a refined, comfortable vehicle. Um, it makes a lot of interesting noises when you're driving it. And it sh shakes you around quite a bit, yeah. as you just saw when we pulled out of the development. Yeah, it's certainly, um, 
certainly firm. So right now it's basically in stock mode. Um, none of the buttons are lit up. Um, if you want to go into comfort mode, you notice there's a comfort button here. I would just hit that button. And supposedly it switches the suspension a little bit and to make it, it to make it more comfortable. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's still pretty firm. I still turn on comfort mode all the time um, because I think it feels a little bit different. But it doesn't feel any different. <laughs> but it definitely feels firm on the firm side. Um, that guy went through. So one of the things I want to show you is just going through a parking lot and kind of some of the noises it makes as you're driving. So it's not terrible. I mean, you you will hear if you get other GTRs. So you hear that little clunk there. That's just normal. That's just that's just very normal for a GTR. It just makes that noise as the dual clutch transmission is shifting. So one of the things you will notice though, if I put this in race mode, then you can hear the difference. So now it's in our mode. And so as I kind of drive around, it's gonna make a lot more, there you go, you hear that? It'll make a lot more gear changes and it gets quite a bit more aggressive um, with how it makes those gear changes. And so, yeah, I used to drive through the parking lot in race mode because I would put it in race mode like all the time. And um, yeah, it got annoying. And so I stopped doing that. But when you get a GTR, right, you're getting it for... You're not getting it to drive around the Smith's parking lot. Because <laughs> it's really not all that enjoyable to drive around in a parking lot well, in the GTR. You don't, you don't like it, but a lot of people like the... A lot of GTR owners... They love the raw feeling and the mechanical sounds it makes. Um, my wife is not one of those, and I, I would say I probably am not one of those as well. But, um, you know, a lot of people really do just love how it sounds and how it feels. And so now we're just going to go on um, go on a ready, regular city street here. So the one, one of the things I do like about the car is just its daily driver ability. Um, if you could show the kind of the windows, Nicole, a little bit. The visibility in this car is really good. Um, unlike some sports cars, especially like mid-engine cars, um, race cars, um, this one, you can absolutely drive this daily and feel very comfortable with it. Um, you will notice right now, can you show the speedometer, Nicole? I am driving. I've got 36 miles an hour and it's in the highest gear that it that it can make and so it won't downshift. <laughs> I don't think it will downshift until it gets to be about 30 miles an hour. So one of the things that's a little bit annoying about the car is it does shift. Um, when you're in low speeds it does shift to the higher gears and for me it just makes it more difficult to get up to speed. Um, and I wish when you put it in the different modes, like the race modes, I kind of wish it would change its shifting strategy to be a little bit more aggressive to not put you in that highest gear. Um, you will notice a difference though, um, as you put it in race mode on how it kind of revs the engine and how it stays um, in, those, in those lower gears for longer. Because of one of those things where, um, the GTR just really does want to run. I'm going to go ahead and put it in race mode because we're turning onto the freeway right now. And I'm just going to do a little spirited on-ramp driving. And one of the things that does happen, so when you put it in race mode, um, the gear shifting changes so it's a little more aggressive. And also the traction control becomes a little less aggressive as well. So on it. So I did a, a I did a full acceleration test right there, um, and there was no wheel slip at all. I mean, that's one of the great things about the GTR is you can get kind of stupid with it, um, 
and uh, make some crazy accelerators, acceleration runs. Um, you can do some crazy maneuvers uh, through curvy roads. And because of the all-wheel drive system, it's just going to keep you safe. Um, so now we're driving on the freeway. We're going 60, 61 or so. And it's not terrible. It's not terrible to live with. These roads have just been resurfaced. Um, so you, um, it'll sound a little bit louder probably than it really needs to be on a, uh, on a nice freeway. But yeah, it's, um, it's livable on the freeway. We took a lot of trips in this car, right? Yeah, well, no, 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 it's fine on the freeway. You know, it's, it's very comfortable. This, the seats in this thing are amazing. I really love the seats. They're, they're so comfortable. Um, I remember when I was thinking about getting a GTR here in Las Vegas, they were charging way over MSRP for it, and that's really why I didn't get it here. But, you know, Nicole sat in the seats and she was like, oh, this is great. The car looked great. She was willing to, um, um... I don't know if I was willing. Well, you said, well, you said you could just buy it. Um, something along those words. She didn't remember. I don't remember that, because normally I'm pretty cheap then. <laughs> I didn't really want him to buy this in the first place. Yeah, so you hear that downshift, how much more aggressive it got. Um, and that's because we're now in, in race mode. Um, and it's um, it's still not keeping those revs high. I would prefer that it kept the revs higher. But it, I mean, but it gets on it really fast when you're in a low, uh, higher gear and you stomp that accelerator. It, it will get there, but it just takes a little bit of time for the transmission to shift into the most optimal gear as well as for the, once you get there, um, then the turbos have to kind of spool up and really, and it really takes off. So I think a lot of people, when they have their GTRs, they upgrade them quite a, quite a bit. They modify them quite a bit. And I've modified other cars. A 2001 Corvette Z06. So I modified the exhaust um, and it was kind of loud from the start, but what? Oh, what? it was awful. <laughs> It was awful, awful, awful. Yeah, it, it was crazy loud. Um, you couldn't hear the radio when you were on the freeway. <laughs> you couldn't hear each other talk on the freeway. That thing was like a jet engine. <laughs> no good. So, yeah, that was fun. I was very glad when that went away. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing I did with the Corvette is I put a supercharger on it. So I had all this crazy horsepower. I think the Corvette at that time, the stock Z06, I think it came in at 385 horsepower. And I think this brought it up to like 530 horsepower, but it wasn't usable. Um, the, because it, it had just rear wheel drive, it just wasn't usable horsepower because I couldn't, um, I could never get any traction. So what's really great about the GTR is the all wheel drive system and how it puts power to the ground. But yeah, we're cruising at the speed limits 55 here and we're cruising at, at 60 miles an hour and it's just very comfortable. But as long as you have a, a, a piece of road with some really nice pavement, I mean, this thing is very comfortable to daily drive. Based on those previous experiences I had with modified cars, I really didn't want to mess around at all at all with this uh, GTR just because I didn't want to have to deal with dealers that wouldn't work on it and you didn't want to have to deal with the wife that kept being like why did you spend more money on it and now it's yeah. causing all these problems yeah. and there's a race mode downshifting here we go oh. okay so you'll hear the exhaust here I'll go ahead and gun it a little drizzle not much um, so we're already in race mode I'm not gonna use launch control I you know I just don't want to you know this car has hundred and twenty seven thousand miles on it you know the transmission is really good and I just don't want to wreck it I'm not messing it up for a video yeah <laughs> I've kept this car totally stock and for the most part it's been very reliable and so I just don't I don't feel like it really needs much in the way you know of using launch control all the time um people do do that and they wreck their transmission we're getting ready to go so i've got it in race mode i do have it in comfort mode you can still have it in comfort mode yeah so <laughs> that was fun um so we 
basically got it up to 60 miles an hour and it was still in second gear. But yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a drizzle coming down and you know, the, the, there was no, there was no, well, maybe a little bit of a slipping on the tires. The all wheel drive system on this thing is just, just amazing. One of the fun things for you ladies out there, um, if your husband does get one of these, or if you get one of these, um, then uh, you will get a lot of looks. You will get so many young guys hanging out of their cars trying to look at the car, and then they look all confused when they see you driving it. Um, it is the most um, interesting phenomenon I think I've come across. Because when I drive it, um, especially if Daryl's not in the car, you can see the look of confusion on their face. <laughs> because I, here I am, middle-aged woman, driving a sports car and they just can't believe it. And I think most of them are very jealous. <laughs> Occasionally you'll get a bunch of people with the thumbs, thumbs up um, looking at you. Especially if you go ahead and try to race them um, at a stoplight. So we're going through a pretty good turn here. I am not a very good driver, so, and we've got a little bit of, um, rain, rain on the road, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's fun, it's fun to take it through those corners, like I said, it will, it will save you, um, if you're, if you're stupid, or you can't drive, um, I don't consider myself stupid, but, um, I don't consider myself a good driver, <laughs> if you can ask my wife, she's not. What I'm gonna do is take it to sixth gear and it'll be at about 30 miles an hour or so. And then I'm gonna stomp on it and I'm in race mode. So it's gonna, the best it's gonna do is, is right here. And now stomp. Right, so it took about, so it'll go, it went all the way to second gear um, as the correct um, gear for it to make that acceleration. But you can see how long it took um, to actually get there. I want to look at the boost tunicle, so let's do that one. I'm going to do the boost as well, so you can see the boost. One of the things about, particularly the 2012 GTR, is they changed the, um, um, the max boost on it. So it used to be, I think with 2011 and, and prior years, um, the boost went from 10.5 to I think 13.5 or 14. Uh, something out of range. I think it's actually Do it while we're here on this nice street. Okay So let's um show what the boost is on this car and how long it takes to get the boost. So we go Right, so you saw it got to um, about So this is 10 this is 15 and so it got to right around 13 or so um, which I think is about the um, the max boost that you get in this car. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, it took a while for that to spool up. So the great thing about this car is the fact that you can do all that stupid stuff I just did. Um, and... <laughs> However, we do not recommend you do this when it's raining. Um, so I almost made Daryl turn back. So um, you can do that stupid stuff even in the rain like this. Don't um, do it in the rain. <laughs> now, of course, the GTR is not going to save you forces of acceleration, meaning that if your car is going so fast and in such a way, you know, maybe your tires will help. Maybe the all wheel drive will kind of help to get you straight. But if you do something just totally ridiculous, right, that um, it's not going to save you from that. But, um, you know, it's going to keep you relatively safe. And, you know, that's one of the things that really is really great about this car is that, that, you know, you can drive it in these kinds of conditions and I feel so safe. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the little drive that we took here. Um, I think my wife enjoyed it and I thank her so much. I think for... you got one really bad face from me. So on it. When he turned onto the freeway, I think I wasn't quite expecting him to go that fast. He, 
you got treated to quite the look on my face on that one. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate Nicole taking the drive with me and I hope you enjoyed our little test drive in my, my little race car here. <laughs> so you're probably wondering how the GTR has held up and how much it costs to maintain it. Well, I've got over 120,000 miles on the car and I've only had two serious issues with it so far. About three years ago, I visited the dealer for just a regular oil change and he informed me that I had a small leak on the front differential. He recommended replacing the entire differential. I asked about fixing it. He says, you know, it comes as one big assembly and there's no fixing it. So I did that and I think it was a couple grand to get that fixed. Um, so that was the one issue. The second issue I had, and this was about a year and a half ago or so, um, was the timing chain. So I got the check engine light on my car and I reset it, thinking maybe it was just a gas thing, um, put new gas in it, ran the car some more, and then about mm, three or four days later the check engine light came back on again. So I took it to the I took it to the shop that I normally take my GTR to and they thought it was a timing chain. They couldn't really say for sure. So they replaced it at a pretty good cost. Everything seemed fine, but then about three or four days later, the check engine light came on again. So I ended up taking it to a Nissan dealer. Um, I had to f try to find kind of like the best tech um, at our local Nissan dealers and I took it to him. He was really good. Um, he said that the timing chain was just a couple of degrees off. Um, you know, I guess there are really close tolerances on the GTR and that's what caused that check engine light to continue to come on. So anyway, he fixed that for me and I haven't had any problems since. So I don't know how common that front differential leak is. I haven't really looked into it too much, but the timing chain, from what I understand, is typically at about 100,000 miles or so, or a little bit over that is when the timing chain will all often fail and it'll stretch out a little bit and that you need to get that replaced. The only other issues that I've had is the AC has gone out a couple of times. I'll look up on the paperwork and see what part that was, but that has gone out a couple of times, I think twice, and it's the same problem. I got regular oil changes um, at the periodic intervals. Um, the transmission fluids and the differential fluids are pretty costly. Um, from what I understand, they are difficult to do and so you should probably have a dealer do those. So that will cost you a little bit. Um, I think they recommended replacing those fluids at like 12,000 miles for earlier GTRs. Not exactly sure why, uh, but I think now the interval is somewhere in the 30,000 mile range. So it's not that bad anymore. So I've been very lucky with the brakes. I think I mentioned that I replaced the brake pads at about 36,000 miles or so. Um, they were kind of wearing thin. Um, a benefit of replacing the OEM brake pads is the squeaking went away, so that was exciting. Um, but I haven't had to replace the rotors yet. The dealer said, I think it was at 36,000, he wanted me to replace them and then I took it to another shop and they're like, you know, he's just trying to rake it for some money. Um, he said the rotors are fine. And so they're still fine. Um, as far as I can tell when I look at them. Um, so I've been really lucky with the rotors and they last a long time. There are some other common issues with GTRs. Um, the transmissions sometimes go bad. It's not surprising folks that um, really <laughs> trash their GTRs and are constantly launching them and using the launch control. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't do that to my GTR. I'm pretty kind to it. I do the occasional accelerations from the stoplights, but I don't use launch control to do that. It's plenty fast enough even without launch control. So I haven't had any sort of transmission issues. I haven't had any sort of bell housing issues, the rattle that are associated with them. I did have that checked, I think around 2000 miles ago in my a uh, GTR guy said that it was still fine, transmission is still good, um, and so I've been really lucky so far. 
And I think that just goes to show the durability of the car. I mean, the engine is really bulletproof unless you really subject it to, um, you know, very high horsepower applications and modifications. And so, you know, you start pushing, you know, that seven, 800 horsepower range and you're probably gonna have to do some internal things on the engine uh, to solidify it. But um, for basic bolt-ons and stuff, you're probably gonna be just fine with that rock solid engine. So I really have to say that I'm very happy with my GTR. It's really an amazing vehicle and I think it's just destined to be a classic. What's really cool about these cars is the resale value. I had my Nissan dealer send me an offer in the mail for my GTR. Now, of course, that offer would be adjusted based on the mileage that I have on my GTR, but the resale value of these cars is just amazing, and I really don't see that changing anytime soon. So let me know if you have any questions. My next video on a GTR will be about purchasing a used one. What year should you consider? What things should you look out for? As always, if you got some value from this video, please consider liking this video as well as subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you all again very soon.